Five Steps to Decode Your Dreams with Jillian Holloway today on the Universal Learning Series radio show. I'm your host, Sandy Andrew. Welcome. Have you ever woken up baffled by dreams you had the night before? Respected dream analyst and intuition expert Jillian Holloway can help you navigate your dreams and pinpoint their meanings with her renowned five-step approach. Unlike dream dictionaries that merely define symbols, the book Five Steps to Decode Your Dreams provides you with a method you can use to uncover how powerful your dreams truly are and how you can positively apply these messages in your dreams to everyday life. The book is designed as a quick guide, but a fairly proven one for students and newcomers to dream studies. It has been used in part by teachers in universities and high schools. It teaches people how to ask questions of themselves and others, how to think symbolically, and explains why dreams tend to have certain qualities that are so puzzling. Jillian Holloway has a PhD in psychology and has been working with dream analysis for more than 20 years. Jillian teaches college courses in dream psychology, nightmares, and intuition at Melhurst University in Portland, Oregon. Please visit Jillian's website at lifetracks.com. And hello, Jillian. Welcome back to the show. Nice to have you. Hello, Sandy. Thank you for joining us here this morning, Jillian. Oh, it's my treat. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It's a, it's a pleasure to speak with you. The last time you were on the show, we were talking about dreams in general, but now you've got this book out that that targets decoding dreams specifically and five steps to do that. So, what are the five steps, Jillian? The five steps, people are always asking me, how do you do this so quickly? How, why is it so <laughs> accurate? So these are the five steps. The first impression you have about a dream, the overall action in the dream, the exaggerated feelings that people usually have inside the dream, the symbols, that's the who, what, and where, and then what's the gift, what's the implication, what's the takeaway. And that's the most important part. Even if you don't understand the whole dream, there's usually an implication, like if you keep going in this direction, is it going to work out? Or are you circling the drain? Do you need to get a new strategy? So that bottom line, that gift in the dream, that's what separates sort of the hocus-pocus of dream work from the real psychological value that they have. And every dream has a potential value. So that's why this is worthwhile and, and worth a second look. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's say a person has a dream that, that just stuns them. And, and and they remember that dream um, because there's only a certain part of the night if you have a deep sleep that you can remember dreams. Let's talk about that a minute before we go on to decoding a dream, Jillian. What part of your sleep cycle do you remember dreams? Well, generally, Sandy, it's the REM cycle, as you know, the rapid eye movement mm-hmm. that occurs every 90 minutes throughout the sleep cycle. And most of us are more likely to remember either a vivid dream that startled us into being awake or the dream you have just before you wake up in the morning. You have a little longer REM cycle then, and it's more like a movie. So it's a little easier to remember because it has that plot, and you can remember the story better than just a, an abstract fragment. Mm-hmm. So, All right. so let's say I have a dream and I wake up and I'm like, gosh, I don't understand what that meant. It traumatized me. What's step <laughs> one? <laughs> Which is all we do, right? <laughs> yes. Well, I I had a student recently that was dreaming that he was he had a recurring dream that he was driving a broken down uh, go kart like a jalopy didn't have any doors on the car it was just a run down you know piece of junk looking thing and he was driving this over and over in his dreams so that was his first impression I've got this crummy car and it probably means there's something wrong with me right. And I said, no, that's just your first impression. What what are you doing in the dream? And he says, well, I'm passing all the other drivers. I'm actually getting ahead and kind of like I'm winning a race. Well, if we hadn't asked that question, he would have thought that this dream was about something wrong with him, low self-esteem or, you know, some problem. But he's actually having a dream about winning, but in an unlikely way. 
So once we've started asking the steps, then how did you feel in the dream? Well, actually, in the dream, I felt great. So it changes things when you start asking these questions. So the symbol, I said, do you have a junkie car? He said, no, I drive a little, you know, late model Honda. So it was a symbol of something that didn't have any doors, didn't have any floorboards. So we went on through this, and I said, well, what's the implication? And he said, actually, I'm do- I've got this funky thing going for me, but it's working, isn't it? He's winning the race. He's passing all the other cars. So we got. So as we got there, he said, you know, I think this is about my job because I'm a cartoonist, and everybody wants me to get a real job. But he was actually freelancing and doing some work for Disney, and he was getting ahead in the most unlikely job in the world. But it was working for him because he was so gifted. So the dream was actually saying, yay, you're winning. Keep going. You know, it was kind of a, a victory race. So the, my point is that the questions, these questions are so critical because we judge our dreams out of prejudice and fear and not knowing what's going on when actually a lot of times there's something entirely different and much more empowering that the dream is showing us. So that's why I put these five steps together. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So was this gentleman was he was he relieved when he figured it out? Do you think that he was, was good? very relieved he was very relieved in the whole class. We worked it together in the classroom and, and everyone could kind of see how we can make judgments and, and they short circuit some of the gift that, that that our dreaming mind can show us. So yeah, and he's a very young kid and so he was at that stage where it seemed like, can I actually make it doing what I'm talented at, or do I have to give it up, you know, chuck it all and go do something that doesn't appeal to me? So the the race was, the dream was saying, you know, it doesn't look good at this point, but you're actually getting ahead, so kind of keep at it. So that's where he left off. It was a dream of, of some encouragement. <laughs> Can you give us another example? Sure, sure. Uh, on a more practical level, there was a woman who was looking at houses to buy and ha- and had settled on one that she was going to make an offer on, but she dreamt <clears throat> excuse me that she had seen uh termites be- beneath the floorboards of the house and um it turned out that upon inspection that there was not termites but there was some kind of dry rot or something ru- something wrong with the foundation of the house. So she changed her mind and didn't didn't buy that one, didn't follow through with it. And I asked her, did you think that was a psychic dream? This woman's a scientist. She said, well, I don't know about psychic dreams, but I do know that part, part of my mind noticed something that I didn't notice consciously, and it appeared in the dream. Now, that's a dream that was fairly obvious on the surface. What you see is what you get. So we didn't have to ask as much about the the five steps, but that's an example of how they can be practical as well as psychological. Well, that is a good example. Do you have uh, any examples where the person does not see it on the surface, consciously or unconsciously? Sure, sure. There was a woman who was having trouble with her boss, her her employer and she, and this woman was kind of picking on her and berating her and not in a not in a completely hostile way but in a way that was always undermining her. <clears throat> she was getting more intimidated and she was having dreams about <clears throat> her grandmother who had been also kind of a bossy person. It's so often the case we work with people who are like family members. It's like we're repeating a cycle. And so her first impression was that I'm being undermined just like I was when I was a kid. That was her first judgment. I said, well, what's going on in the dream? And she said, well, actually, my grandma and I are doing some interesting things together because later on, when I was older, we became the best of friends. And I said, well, how did you feel in the dream? She said, I felt pretty good in the dream because it was about after we turned the corner, we became best friends. So I said, well... Do you, are you still with your grandmother? She said, no, she's passed. So then we knew that grandmother was a symbol. And I said, is there anyone in your life that reminds you of that? And she said, e- yeah, easily my boss is very similar to my grandma. I said, well, okay, what can you take away from this dream? What's the implication? She said, well, 
the way that I became best friends with my grandma was because I eventually learned to stand up to her and not be cowed by her brash, you know, kind of loud, outspoken style. I became an ally, and, and we became friends after I sort of got my gumption up. So that was the implication. With Use that strategy with her boss, who was sort of throwing her for a curve, and that's exactly what she did. And it, not in a you know, insubordinate way, but just in a, a more assertive way, more authentic voice instead of being cowed. And, and it worked with the boss the same way it had worked with her grandmother. It was as if a part of her mind recognized this personality type that's a little overbearing but with a heart of gold. But when somebody is being overbearing, you don't realize they have a heart of gold. So it was, it was a gift in the dream that helped her with a strategy that she wouldn't have thought of consciously because she was in a reaction mode. So the takeaway and the point is that our dreams can recognize something far beyond what we're dealing with consciously, and that can be useful. So that's why these five steps fall into place sometimes. Jillian, have you had any clients that have dreamt of uh, military combat? Sure. Military combat is a very common dream, both from veterans and from people who have never been in a combat situation. Combat dreams and fight scenes are very common. So the the question about the symbols is, you know, to just check the background. If you've been a combat veteran, then you could be having, you know, kind of a post-traumatic dream situation. If you've never been in combat, then you know it's symbolic and it represents some kind of conflict that you're dealing with, if that makes sense. So that's where I start with those kinds of situations. Okay, so recap for the listener here, the five-step approach on um, decoding dreams. Yes. Rather than make a prejudicial judgment about your dream, <laughs> look at your first impression, what stands out to you. Then look at the action. That's your metaphor for what the whole dream is about. That's really the most critical thing. Then examine how you felt in the dream. Then look for the symbols, who, what, and where. See if they make sense logically. If it's not logical, it's symbolic. And then what's the implication of the dream for you to plug into your waking life situation to get a better handle on things? Simple. And there are there are lots of questions in the book where, you know, I give examples and you can kind of see how to ask yourself the question or how to ask your friend or your child the question. Well, this seems a better approach to me than just looking up a dream dictionary because I, I, I've looked at dream dictionaries before, Shalene, and I, I don't understand how they can tell me what my dream was about. It just doesn't feel right. Well, it's only one piece of the overall truth of a dream. And so to use that piece and uh, try to try to say that's what it's all about, it's just not logical. It doesn't quite pan out. So we need a, a little bit more, but they're, they're not difficult steps. They're quite simple once you, once you start using them. It's not the only way to work with dreams, but it certainly is a fast way and an accurate way. Now, you have wrote um, a few books on dreams. Um, is this about your f fourth book? Yes. Yes, it is. And it, it's the method that I've been teaching for 20 years. And as you mentioned at the opening of the show, it's also been taught in other universities and high schools and uh, by therapists. And also it's uh, been distributed in some prisons and institutions as well. Because it's just simple, doesn't interfere with your um, religion or your preferred philosophy. It's just a practical approach. So uh, people really seem to like it. That's great. How many pages is in a book? It's quite small. It's a it's a nice little handbook size. I think it's just 160 pages or so, um, and it's it's in all the bookstores now, and uh, it's also available online, of course. When was it released, Jillian? It's just out, Sandy. It was it came out the first of the month, and um, it's been available. So Pieces of it have been available in different forms before, but, but it's all together now. And it also talks about if you've got friends and you want to start a little dream discussion group, how to go about that, and what are you know what's the best way to approach that. Um, so it's it's got something for everyone who wants to work with dreams, or if you're just starting out. Sounds good. I mean, dreams really are a big puzzle, and we all experience them every night. <laughs> right. 
Well, there, I mean, it's one thing to understand your dream. It's so, it can be so useful. And it's also understanding yourself. And as you know from your work, when you kind of understand how your life story is pieced together and what's really going on here, that's a big part of what understanding dreams is about, too. It, it helps you see the bigger picture of your life and gives you a, a great sense of um, motivation and a greater hope about your whole life. So um, I can't stress enough how empowering it can be. Excellent. Excellent. We have been discussing the brand new book, Five Steps to Teach Gold Your Dreams with Jillian Holloway. Please visit her website at lifetracks.com. Jillian, thank you for coming on to the show this morning and talking about your brand new book. Oh, you're welcome, Sandy. I really appreciate the opportunity. All right. Have a great day. Thank Thank you you. and bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Universal Learning Series radio show where we discover the spiritual and scientific universe.